as we have seen in laminar flow that is uh, the viscous force of the fluid dominates inertial force now during the flow of the fluid there will be various physical quantities such as viscosity shear stress and other physical quantities so let us develop an equation for shear stress for a laminar flow Let us develop an equation of shear stress in a circular pipe having a laminar flow. So for that we have to consider a pipe of diameter D. So let us consider a pipe having diameter D. So this is a pipe having diameter D. This is the cross sectional area. This is the front view of that entire pipe. We imagine over here that it is carrying a fluid having a laminar flow. Now if it is having a laminar flow it should have some inertial force which will drag it from this section that is section 1 1 to section 2 2 so it will drag it from section 1 1 to section 2 2 that is none other than the force which we apply over here or rather first we will consider with the pressure at this section 1 1 that is P1 and the pressure at section 2 2 as P2 now for the fluid to flow from section 1 1 to section 2 2 we know that P1 should be greater than P2. If P1 is greater than P2, then the fluid will flow along this direction. If it isn't greater, then it won't flow. The direction of the flow might change or it might not flow if both the pressures are equal. So, let us take one control volume in this entire pipe. So let us name this control volume as having a displacement of dx and the radius at a distance r and having a thickness which will represent over here in cross sectional area it is having a thickness of dr. So radius is small r and its thickness over here is dr. So we have actually defined this entire control volume which is in the form of cylindrical coordinates. Now let us consider this control volume and enlarge this entire diagram. So what do we get over here? Let us understand. So now the pressure at this section at a distance x from an origin so this is dx and from an origin it has a distance of x b px and the pressure at this part b equals to px plus dx. Now obviously px is greater than px plus dx. So these forces or this pressure will enable the fluid to flow from section 1 1 to section 2 2. But since we are studying that is laminar flow In laminar flow, there will be viscosity which will predominate the inertial force or rather viscous force will predominate the inertial force. Now during this, there will be some amount of resistance offered. This resistance will be offered along the curved surface area of the fluid. Now that resistance offered is called as viscous resistance so this viscous resistance will be in opposite direction now let us draw let us write down the equation over here now over here we know that this viscous resistance is due to the shear stress applied by the fluid on this entire cross-sectional area that is on the curved surface area 
so imagine if you have a bottle in which we have kept in horizontal direction now the fluid is flowing from one end to another end so during this what happens in the bottle is the pressure at one end is greater than the pressure at the other end now when it is greater there is some resistance offered by the viscosity of the fluid in the inner curved surface area of that entire bottle so that inner curve surface area is called as the viscous resistance now the viscous resistance acts on the curve surface area and the inertial force acts upon the cross sectional area now since the velocity of the fluid is minimal in laminar flow we are going to develop an equation of newton's second law of motion now let us understand this part that is from Newton's second law of motion says that summation of fx is equals to mass into acceleration in x direction. Now, so we'll apply this equation in this direction. Summation of fx will contain that is px into its area of cross section since we have to represent it force we have to multiply pressure by area of cross section and p of x plus dx into area of cross section so this is going towards right hence it will be positive and this is going towards left hence it will be negative so let us write down these two forces over here so what do we get that is px into area of cross section minus of p x plus dx into area of cross section now let us see what are the things which are going in opposite direction so this is the shear force which is applied that is going in opposite direction now shear force can be written as fs is equals to tau into area of curved surface not of cross-sectional area now that is let us understand this part supposingly you have a bottle which is in horizontal direction you have to remove the wrapper of the bottle so if you have to remove the wrapper of the bottle what you do is you apply a force which is parallel to the curved surface area of the bottle now when you apply a force which is parallel to the curved surface area the force which you apply is called as the shear force where force is parallel to the curved surface area so here we won't have cross-sectional area we'll have over here curved surface area of the cylinder so let us write down this now since it is going in the opposite direction it will be negative so this will be minus of tau into curved surface area of the cylinder so let us sort out the we have sorted out the left hand side of this equation the right hand side of the equation is mass into acceleration in x direction let us evaluate one each and every term in this equation so first let us calculate area of cross section now area of cross section is the cross section through which the fluid is going to flow in this direction so this will be the area of cross section so now let us write down the area of cross section that will be equals to that is pi r square at that radius now next is curve surface area now curve surface area is in this equation will be for the shear stress now let us understand this part if you have a bottle which is horizontal and if you have to remove the wrapper of that bottle so the force by which you apply the force which you apply to remove the wrapper is actually the shear force now shear force will be responsible and acting on the curved surface area of that entire cylinder so shear force will be acted upon this entire curved surface area hence shear force will be uh, hence the curved surface area will be given as a, a c that will be equals to that is pi r that is equals to pi r l into 2 
So this will be equals to 2 pi r into dx since the length of since the length of this entire cylinder is equals to dx. So that is curved surface area. Next we will see what is acceleration. Now acceleration will be equals to 0 because here ax will be 0 because the velocity of the fluid is constant. So if velocity of the fluid is constant then ax will be 0 that is the right hand side of the equation will be 0. Next part that will be related to px plus dx. Now we have a term px plus dx which is similar to f of x plus h. We will expand this according to the expansion of Taylor series. Now what is the expansion of Taylor series? That is f of x plus f dash of x upon 1 factorial into, into h plus f double dash of x upon 2 factorial into h square plus higher order terms of this equation. Now similar to this expansion we are going to expand px plus dx. So this is px plus dx will be equals to p of x plus dou p by dou x of px into instead of h you have dx. So this is dx plus higher order terms. So we will consider this as higher order terms. Now over here what we have to consider that is value of dx that is in control volume which we have previously seen this is the control volume having a small length dx. The higher powers of this equation will be 0. Hence we can write over here that is dx raised to n will be equals to 0 because dx is small is very small hence higher order terms are equals to 0 hence higher order terms are equals to 0 so we'll get p x plus dx is equals to p of x plus dou p by dou x into dx. So now in this equation that is Newton's second law equation which we have previously seen we have calculated the value of px plus dx. We have calculated the value of area of cross section across the two pressures as well as the curved surface area and acceleration. So let us substitute one one values all the values in this equation. So what do we get over here is px into area of cross section that is pi r square minus of px plus dx can be written as this expansion that is px plus dou p by dou x into dx into area of cross section that is pi r square minus tau that is shear stress which is multiplied by the curved surface area that is 2 pi r into dx that is equals to 0. So these all terms are now equals to 0 because acceleration is equals to 0. Now if we expand this part so we will get this as px into pi r square minus px again into pi r square minus dou p by dou x into dx into pi r square minus of tau into 2 pi r into dx will be equals to 0. So these two terms will go away will be remaining with will be left with these two terms. Now let us take these terms on right hand side and let us write down the equation. So what do we get over here is equals to minus of dou p by dou x into dx into pi r square will be equals to tau into 2 pi r into dx. So now over here in this equation what things will go away? First thing that is value of pi 
and pi will go away. Similarly, value of dx and dx will be cancelled and one value of r will be cancelled. So, what we are left with that is tau equals to that is minus of dou p by dou x into r and this 2 will come in the denominator by 2. Now, over here we have got this as shear stress that is tau. So, tau will be equals to minus of dou p by dou x into r by 2. Now, if you consider dou p as dou, dou p by dou x as constant, so what do we get? Tau is equals to min, minus of constant into r by 2. That means tau is a function of r and we have a negative sign over here. Now, what this represents is the entire part, the Negative sign represents that if you increase the value of radius, then it is going to decrease the shear stress. Now, let us understand this part that is related to a pipe flow. So, if you consider this as a pipe and this as the center, so we know that we have a lower limit over here that is at the center the radius will be equals to 0 and at the circumference the radius will be equals to r will be equals to capital R. Now we have an equation that is tau is equals to minus dou p by dou x into r by 2. Now we have kept this entire variable as constant so this is tau is equals to minus k into r by 2. Now if you see this equation is similar to equation of line y is equals to minus mx having a slope as negative. So that means over here the shear stress at this point will be will be 0 if you substitute that as r is equals to 0 tau will be equals to 0 and shear stress will be maximum as you go away from the center of the pipe. So at small r is equals to capital R tau will be equals to tau max which will be equals to minus k into capital R by 2. So over here since tau is li linearly related to r this will look something like this. Now, as we are increasing the radius, we are increasing the radius along radial direction. As we increase the radius from the center to the circumference, we can see that the resistance offered by shear stress will increase. So that is why the arrows which are made towards are made towards left. Why? Because as we are increasing the radius, the shear stress is gradually increasing. The maximum shear stress at small r is equals to capital R and the minimum shear stress that is at r equals to 0 that is equals to minimum. So now we have plotted the graph of shear stress versus the velocity profile, shear stress versus the radial direction. Now, I hope you have understood what is shear stress variation through a circular pipe containing laminar flow. Thank you.